Hi everyone, welcome to ISK24.3. In this tutorial, I'm painting a roaring tiger by using Winston Newton's watercolor. So let's get started. First, I'm creating the graphite sketch using the grid for guidelines. Starting it with the right side of the ear, adding soft handed details in it by sketching the long and short hair texture inside of it. The best thing to improve your illustration is to draw then phrasing. It might be time consuming but very helpful to improve your drawing skills. Next, I begin with the nose and if you examine it closely, you will find a rounded triangular form as a guideline. After getting the basic shape, I'm adding details and blocking in the darker values to the nostrils. In materials, I'm using heavy Kensen sheet about 300 grams because thicker paper can evenly hold the moisture and using HP mechanical pencil for the sketch. Now starting the eye for that, I'm marking a reference line at 45 degree angle then I begin the structure of the eye and the iris. At this level, I start adding the details within the iris by developing the little texture of connected strands. Also creating the black fur around the eye and you may be able to see that I'm not marking the harsh lines. All I'm attempting to create is neat and clean illustration so there will be no difficulties at the time of painting. Currently, I'm drawing the other eye and you can clearly see the angle and the reference line. The shape of the eye like an oval with conical lens. There is an important thing to share with you guys is that observe your reference picture into the basic geometrical shape and don't trap into too many details at the beginning try to make it easy and simple. Here I'm marking the crease line at the bridge of the nose to develop the facial impression. Over here I'm sketching the mouth and marking the guidelines to attain the basic shapes and add details. I'm drawing the upper teeth, the middle four teeth are the central incisors and the teeth after them are the lateral incisors. Furthermore, I'm drawing the canines that are the largest and the conical ones. Subsequently, I'm drawing its tongue, its wider and curvy above the apex area. Then adding details and reach to the lower jaw that initiate with the canine and they don't seem to be as large as the upper canines are. Afterward, draw the lateral and central incisors and finishes it to the other canine. Also adding light handed details for depth and shading. Another important thing is that don't rush yourself and don't try to finish your painting in an hour or two. Better to follow your speed and take breaks whenever you need to relax your eyes because a good art piece needs a quality time with an active mind. So be patient and let things happen in a good way. But don't try to mark the hair stalks in one position. Follow the direction of the growth and the clumps of the hair. This is how you will achieve the realism in your painting. Well, uh, all of us identify the different species of the white cat with the pattern on their fur, like leopards have rosettes, cheetahs have spots on their fur, and tiger have white stripes, and so on, etc, etc. An interesting thing about the tigers, they have striped skin beneath the fur, and that depigmentation of the skin creates a dark tone to the fur. Inspire yourself if you want to achieve a good outcome that is important for an artist, but don't rush yourself. Be fearless and take it easy. Right here, I'm adding the striped texture above the eye and their little curvy which extends from the middle of the head and spreads around the face. They also have dotted pattern around the eye in the muzzle area. Tigers have unique and different patterns on the fur. I'm just sketching the design of the stripe uh, to this part of the face after completing it also to the other side. But remember, the pattern will not be the same. It's like an asymmetrical design. Follow your reference picture to start your drawing by keeping simple shape in mind. It will help you to create a three-dimensional object. Listen to your mind and follow your speed, it's your work so you can make a better decision that how fast and slow you need to be.
Meanwhile, I'm working on this ear and adding details to the clump of the hairs. Another important tip to share with you guys is that don't forget to zoom out your vision after completing each step. It will help you to eliminate the mistakes. Now, I'm drawing the long length fur around the cheeks and the jaw. They are known as draws. You also have a partial mane at the neck, so I'll cover that too. I'm finishing the tiger illustration by sketching the stripes along the width of the body. Finally, our sketch is ready, so let's begin with the painting. I started with the outline of the eye by using a grey color. It's a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna water consistency. I begin with the main feature of the face. I mean the nose, eyes, mouth to maintain the shapes. Then applying a little water gray on the tip of the damp brush for the smooth touch. I'm just applying a plain wash around the main feature of the face. Now I'm filling the nose with light peach tone and there are two ways to create this shade. Number one is add white with a small amount of yellow and red. And number two is if you already have white pink then simply add a little bit of lime yellow. That's it. I'm using lime green as a base color in the iris. It's a mixture of cadmium yellow and cerulean blue. Then implement the burnt sienna around the pupil and at the shaded area I'm blending the colors with a moist brush tape and smudging it with the back and forth transition. Once again I'm back to the iris and at this point I'm developing a deeper effect by using burnt sienna. Here I'm using a creamy texture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to make the pupil more visible. For this I'm using zero size brush. To produce more depth and details, I'm adding creamy consistency of burnt sienna and blend it with the moist brush in back and forth transition. For a realistic and pop-up effect, I'm applying multiple coats of darker values. Darker tones defines the shaded area and make the highlights more shiny to maintain the contrast. It also helps to build a 3D impact on the painting. To get good contrast, mark accurately where the darker and lighter tones are falling. Furthermore, let each of the layers get dry before applying the other one. This helps you to save the previous details and textures. At this stage, I'm adding darker values to the outline of the eye. It's a mixture of burnt umber, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue. So keep adding darker values, but don't disturb the highlights. Here, I'm working in a variety of colors to develop a good contrast, but don't catch up in too much details at a very initial stage. I'm using water consistency of gray tone around the eye. Once I build the deeper tones around it, then start adding other shades. It will enhance the depth and details. Then, I use the lighter colors to build an eye-catching contrast. For highlights, I'm using titanium white, green, lime yellow, and yellowish green shade. I'm marking the fur with a light tip of the brush and stroking the hair lens by following the direction of its growth. With the help of white color, I'm filling the set of highlights inside the iris and add the lacrimal terrancle by using zero size brush. To achieve a realistic depth and highlights, add as much darker and lighter values as required by following the reference picture. Once again, I'm back to the left side of the eye after our greenish yellow wash, now adding lime yellow to build a vibrant base. And for deeper shades, I'm using burnt sienna. Right here, I'm adding dark gray around the eye line. It's a mixture of burnt umber and cerulean blue. I'm also using other gray tones in the pupil. Adding reddish gray tone around the eye and the lacrimal terrancle. It's a mixture of alizarin crimson purple and intense blue of Vincent and Newton's watercolor. If you don't have these videos, then you can simply use red, purple, and ink blue. I'm mixing the cadmium yellow and lime yellow to create the shine at the base cup. 
applying more gray tones to produce darker effects and keep blending the colors and working in a color radiation to produce a realistic effect but I'm not disturbing the shaded area with the highlights. Eyes are an important feature of the painting. Many people including myself begins with the eyes so you must dedicate most of that time to it. The best thing to begin with the painting is to find a good reference picture. Next, examine it attentively to understand the structure and the shape into the basic forms. After that, you're ready to commence the project. Oops, what a mess. Seems like the paper is still wet from here. Well, no worries, I'll show you how to fix it. Here I'm fixing the affected highlighted area, so first I'm applying the titanium white and let it dry before applying another application. Then using light pink and peach color on it and blend it very gently. So you can see that how I have fixed the affected nose and successfully removed the darker values from the highlighted area. And it's better to do mistakes because they teach us how to deal with these problems. Finally, I reach to the tongue and believe me, it is actually the most tricky part of the face. So I begin with a dark pink tone at the outlines, then light pink wash to the remaining area. You can see how I'm smudging the lighter values to the darker ones. This pink is the mixture of red, white and a small amount of cadmium yellow. I'm applying another layer of pink and purple to the needed areas. In the darkened areas, I'm using water consistency of grey shade using zero size brush to create a texture on the surface of the tongue. I'm developing a light texture with whitish pink color and adding purplish grey tone at the darkened ones then blend it again. I'm increasing the highlights at the curved part to show the shine. I'm applying multiple layers of rose pink, purple and white color. Also, I'm putting some gray to make it more darker. Here, I'm using rose pink color. It's a mixture of white and a tiny amount of red and ultramarine blue and mix them. Likewise, for purple, I just increased the quantity of blue in the same mixture. If you find any mistake, just make it correct before it gets worse because our mistakes leads us into the right direction. So be playful and keep adding and subtracting the tones. Take as many breaks as much you need to and be passionate about whatever you're working on. Here I'm creating the green texture by using the tip of the small brush. I'm developing a nice color contrast by using purple gray and white and I keep blending them for a smooth finish. I'm adding white green in texture to the tongue by following the direction but don't do it in random ways. Try to add details by following the reference picture. Examine it closely so you can see all the details. For more tones, I'm using Faber-Castell water-based pencil colors and which are 421 red, 416 orange, 433 lavender, 434 violet, triple four navy blue, and equivalent black fabric castle pencil, 401 white, also the white charcoal pencil, and the Durban Chinese white oil based pencil. It's an optional if you have it, it's okay. If you don't have it, never mind. Another interesting thing is that. There are hundreds of sharp hollow spines like scoop which are carpeted backward to the tongue and they are called papilla. Finally, I have done with the tongue and heading towards the teeth. Here I am using water consistency of yellowish white. It's a mixture of white and a little amount of yellow ochre. Well, at this level, I'm using 432 feet skin tone of Faber-Castell watercolor pencils to the gums. I'm also using aquarel black of Faber-Castell to block in the darker values. Then adding another layer of peach tone to the gums. It's a mixture of red, white and yellow tone. To increase the depth and the contrast of the teeth, I'm adding yellow ochre and light gray. 
Next, I'm adding water consistency of rose pink to the lips, afterwards adding a bit of purple in it. One thing you might be thinking about the tigers and other praying mammals, that why they are having darker areas around the mouth? It's because darker color absorbs and protects against the solar radiation. To block in the darker values, I'm using dark gray mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. But the wild cat's tongue is comparatively rougher than the domestic cat's. It's more like a sandpaper because their papilla are so sharp that's why they can easily scrap the meat from the bone. For highlights, I'm using Windsor and Neurons Titanium White. I'm repeating the same color range to develop a realistic effect. Another informative thing is that Tiger canines have pressure sensing nerves due to that, they know where to deliver a deadly bite to the victim. I'm applying watery pigment wash to the shaded areas. Now I'm working at the stripes, I'm marking the small hair like strokes but before doing this, you should practice it on an extra paper. The trick that how am I marking these strokes is so simple, just gently press the tip of the brush at the start of the line and slip it towards the end, that's it. So practice it until getting full control over the pressure and the movement of the hand. All this practice will help you in painting animals fur. But make sure that the brush isn't too white not this so dry. First I'm applying the watery consistency of grey. It's a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I'm filling it by following the flow of the fur. Have you noticed that during the pencil sketch I didn't add too many details? All I did to create the basic shapes and so on. Here at the fur I'm adding multiple layers of different colors to render a good contrast. Another informative thing is that the stripe pattern at the top of the head of the tiger resembles the Chinese character Wang which means the king. And these stripes are so essential for their survivals as they act as a camouflage like a shadow in the grass and the trees. I'm adding acetones to the rest of the fur using yellow ochre as a base layer. For this, I'm using six size brush. To achieve more vibrant effect, I'm applying cadmium orange to the skin and using the plain watery brush for blending. To develop a lighter texture, I'm utilizing a white tone, it's a mixture of white and yellow curve. For darker values, I'm adding grey, it's a mix of yellow ochre, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. For this, I'm using zero size brush. The earthy tones of the fur blends in with the natural breeds, trees and the grass, while the black stripes break the appearance of the solid forms and helps the animal to be hidden in the shadows of the tree. These characteristics of the fur helps them to grow close to the prey when they are attacking. Now I'm applying another cream gray layer to the stripes. Interestingly, the skin of the tiger also has stripes beneath the fur. The deep pigmentation of the skin creates darkness to the fur. Well, tiger possess two types of hairs, the guard hairs and the under hairs. The guard hairs are long and give them protection, but the under hairs are smaller and keeps them warm. And there is another important tip to improve your painting is that whenever you initiate the painting, first Treat the shadows into darker values, then add highlights.
Over here, I'm adding the details to the ears. The color palette is the same as the rest of the fur. Tiger ears are so sensitive, they can hear all sorts of sounds that may be muffled in the dense forest. I'm using yellow ochre, white, gray inside of the ear, also using black watercolor pencil. And I keep adding darker and lighter values to develop more contrast in the depth. Once again, I'm applying the black tone to the stripes. It's a creamy mixture of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and very small amount of black. All I'm doing here is strengthening the darkness of the stripes. Along with that, I'm adding gray texture at the white areas of the fur. For this, I'm using zero size brush. I'm keeping the strokes flowing in the direction of the hair growth. The natural fur is not silky, but it's rough and gathered in clumps. So, I'm paying attention to the clumps of the hair when rendering the fur. Just don't get panic if the fur gets darker because it will get much lighter in the further steps. For more color variations, I'm marking the pale hairs to the white fur. Furthermore, you might notice that everything is done nicely and lightly at this stage, nothing is too harsh. That's why I often say that I'm dipping my toes to the water. If I found any mistake at any stage, that's easy to correct because I'm not yet panic and I'm not rushing myself. If you notice the white fur of the tiger, you might find the grayish white shades. This is because of the reflection of the light and the cast shadows that is due to the thickness of the fur. To develop the harsh lines of the whiskers, I'm using creamy white with low consistency of water. But if you want, you can use white gel pen. Remember, all the options are wide open towards the new ideas that might arise by observing the painting when taking breaks. And during breaks, I always try to have a complete look to the painting, that the finished objects are completely done or they need a little more effort. To add more definitions in the stripes, I'm adding creamy grey. For fine strokes, I'm using chiseled of a rounded brush for certain highlights I'm using creamy white paint to the whiskers and the fur try to work step by step observe the fur at the muzzle area above the eye and around the cheek this will let you focus on the shapes structure and their textures that's why practice makes us able to fix the problems and improve our technique
I'm treating the fur of the body by applying the base color and also retouching the stripes. Here I'm using the gray shade to reinforce the stripes. It's a mixture of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber and a very little amount of red with a watery consistency. And to the fur, I'm adding the earthy tones. It's a mixture of burnt sienna, cadmium yellow, and cadmium orange. For highlights, I'm just using a white color. It's a mixture of white and yellow ochre. And to develop the depth, I'm adding burnt umber. That's it. I started the fur with the darker values, then moved to the lighter ones. You can see how the hairs of the different colors are overlapping each other to achieve the beautiful contrast in the depth. At last, I'm applying the set of highlights to the fur by using the white paint of Vincent Newton. I hope you have enjoyed this wildcat tutorial. If you want to see the real time version of this lesson, then check out my Patreon account where I uploaded 18 real time episodes of this tutorial from sketching to painting. That's about more than 22 hours long tutorial with every step and technique. For background, I'm using cross green, dark green, white, burnt umber, and gray. If you want to add more tones, then you can add them accordingly. To create a book effect, I'm just using a white charcoal pencil and a rounded stencil. At the end, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Now I'll see you in next tutorial. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.